Great. Welcome to topic two, where we start talking about slope. Now, uh, we just kind of have to take a look at what slope is. And what it is, is a measure, a measure of how much we go up versus how much we go over. Essentially, we are going to create a, a fraction or a comparison between the rise and the run. Okay, so there's slope you can see it everywhere. We use it in wheelchair ramps, um, inclines, driving on a hill, skiing, snowboarding, all of those things involve slope. Now it's calculated by comparing the change in vertical distance, which is a rise, with the change in horizontal distance, which is a run. Now rock climbing is a sport in which the slope is very important. So imagine you're going on a rock climbing trip. The climbing glide on that trip has placed safety clips in secure, pots, in secure spots along the climb, and you start the climb at point S, which is zero, zero, and end at point E, uh, which is 2019. And we looked at what coordinate pairs were in the last video. Safety clips have been placed along the route at A, B, C, and D, and we're asked to label those points. So we just have to start out by placing our points along the line. Okay, so A is 5, 5. E is 10, 8, C is 14 and 14, and D is 19, 16. Okay, so there's all the points. And uh, we're asked to complete the table down below. So round all answers to the nearest tenth if needed. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate the rise and the run for each of these. And the rise basically is the difference between the y coordinates. So my rise here is going to be 5, and my run also going to be 5. And then my rise over my run, we're going to take those two numbers and divide them, and we're going to basically find our slope. So we can continue the pattern. So if I go 8 minus 5, I'm going to get 3. 10 minus 5, I get 5. 3 over 5, 0 0.6. 14 minus 8 is 6. 14 minus 10 is 4, 6 over 4, uh, to the nearest tenth, 1.5, 16 minus 14 is 2, 19 over minus 5, 14 is 5, 2 over 5 is 0 0.4, uh, 3, 1, 3 over 1, slope of 3. Okay, so there you go, rise and run all done. I have to rank these line segments from easiest to most difficult to climb. So the easiest is going to be the one with the lowest slope. Okay, the hardest one to climb is going to be the highest slope. Okay, the bigger the slope is, the closer that line is to being vertical. Okay, and it's really, really hard to climb a line that's vertical. If it's pretty flat, it's easy to climb. You could almost just walk across it. Okay, so explain how you decided. There's our explanation. Now we just got to rank them. Uh, so we'll go easiest being a 1, hardest being a 5. Okay, so the lowest number first. So here's 1, then 2, then 3, 4, and the last stretch is the most difficult to climb. Okay, so there's our ranking. Okay, the formula for slope, which we label as m. So slope has a variable, and we use the letter m. Now all it is is the ratio, so the fraction, of vertical change to horizontal change. And we're going to call that rise and run. Okay, down below is the same formula, except we're going to use y2 minus y1, just like we did in the previous video for the rise, x2 minus x1 for the slope, or for the run. Okay, so if I divide those two quantities, we're going to get our slope. And when we're determining the slope of a line on a graph, always start from the left side and move to the right side. Okay, then count the rise and run so that you are moving from the left point to the right point. Just like we read a sentence, we always read from left to right. Slope could be positive or negative. So while we're moving up the hill, 
slopes positive. If we're moving down, the rise is negative. Okay, a horizontal line has a slope of zero. Okay, it's flat, we aren't rising, we aren't going up or down, so our rise is zero, which means our slope is zero. A vertical line has a slope that is undefined. Okay, if I were to use my slope equation and go rise over run, it doesn't matter what I have in for the rise, I'm gonna be going up or down regardless, but the run is where I have a problem. I'm not going left or right, and I cannot divide by zero. Okay, that's an undefined quantity. So if I have a vertical line, the slope is undefined. If it's horizontal, my slope is zero. Okay, the slopes of five lines are shown below. Which of them falls to the right? Okay, we're looking at the ones that fall to the right. So it has to be our negative slopes. Okay, that one falls right. That's the only negative one we've got. Which line is horizontal? So if I've got a horizontal line, I've got a slope of zero. So this is horizontal. Uh, which line is vertical? We just said those are undefined slopes. Vertical, because I don't have a run. And the other ones are positive. They're going up and to the right. Okay, arrange the five lines from steepest to flattest. So the undefined one is going to be the steepest. So maybe we'll make that a 5, and flattest is going to be 1. So we'll start with our flat line of 0. There's 1. The next biggest value is the 0.3. My 0.5 is my next one. And my next steepest line has to be line 3. It's the biggest one I've got. And my vertical one is the one that's the most steep. It's perfectly vertical, straight up and down. So there is the order that I need. Example two, the endpoints of the line segments are given. Use the slope formula to calculate the slope of each line rounded to the nearest tenth. And check the slope by counting the rise and run on the grid. So we're only going to do one of these um, because you have a built-in double check. You can count the line and the rise and run for yourself. So we'll just do the first one here. Um, so we're going to use that formula. So we need to label our points x1, y1, x2, y2. And the slope formula tells me I take y2 minus y1, I divide it by x2 minus x1. So if we put all of our numbers in the right spot, we should get 8 minus 5 on the top and 4 minus negative 2 on the bottom. So on top I get 3, on the bottom 6. So my slope is 1 over 2. Okay, if I count that on the grid, I'm looking for A, B, so my run should be 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I should be going up 3 units, 1, 2, 3. So this works out perfectly. My rise and my run are perfectly done. I can reduce that fraction to a half, and my slope is a half. Um, to the nearest tenth, it works out to be 0 0.5. Okay, so I'll leave you with B, C, and D, um, and you can try those ones out on your own. Example 3. The slope of a straight wheelchair ramp is 1 over 12. Determine the horizontal distance, so to find the run, to the nearest tenth for the ramp to rise to a height of 0 0.6. So it helps to see it just as a picture. So my ramp might look something like this. And we've dealt with right angle triangles before. So I'm looking for the run that's horizontal. I know the rise is 0 0.6. Now I'm not trying to find the hypotenuse or anything like that. I'm just trying to find out the horizontal distance. Now we're gonna use the slope because it's equal to rise over run. This is the formula that I have to work with. I know the slope is one over 12. I know the rise is 0 0.6. I'm trying to find the run. Okay, from here, um, this is our fish method once again. So take 0 0.6 and multiply it by 12. And you're gonna find out that 7.2 meters is the horizontal run that is attributed to this ramp. Okay, the sign down below, uh, basically it's got a truck on an incline, and this is the grade of the road ahead. Basically it tells you how steep the hill is you're about to drive on. 
Okay, so to, de to determine the percent grade of a road or any surface, we're going to use the following formula. So we're going to find the rise over the run, we're going to multiply it by 100, and that will tell us the percentage, uh, the percent grade of the road. Now, the steeper the slope is, the higher the percent grade. So if this is a 100% grade, essentially it's going to be very, very steep. It's going to be the steepest, one of the steepest things that we can deal with. So that fourth example says Highway 56 south of Drumheller. It's one of the steepest in Alberta. A section of the roadway rises 1.6 meters for every 20 meters of run. So my formula, rise over run, multiplied by 100. And we're looking for the percent grade, so I know I need to multiply. So my rise is 1.6 meters. My run is 20 meters. And we'll multiply that by 100 to get us our percentage. 1.6 divided by 20, multiply by 100, and that's going to give us 8%. Okay, so that's an 8% road, and uh, it's one of the steepest in Alberta. So it kind of gives you a sense of um, how steep these roads can be. Okay, so there's the end of that first or that second topic, I guess. Uh, down below, again, there are some practice ones, so I'll scroll down. I'll you can pause the video to try them out. So you have a bunch here that deal with that slope formula. Really, really important that you label the points in the correct way. And there is your answer key. In topic three, in our next video, we'll talk about rate of change and uh, what that means.